Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm Dr. Jay Rutland, I'm the host. I appreciate all your comments and feedback. And with all of those comments and feedback, I've gotten some requests. Some people have asked me to discuss what it is to be a chest physician and what it is to be a pulmonologist. So I thought I'd spend a few moments today discussing some medical terminology like mediastinum and pulmonology. So let's move on to that. So let's think about this for a second. When we think about pulmonology and we think about chest physicians, what are we talking about? We're talking about things that take place within your chest area. And what we're talking about, you have your ribs. Those are bones that lie under your muscles here. And those ribs are there for a reason. Why are those ribs there? They're protecting things. They're protecting vital structures, things that you need to survive. What are those organs that lie within those ribs? Well, we all know that we have a heartbeat. So the heart is one of those organs. We've gone over this, just a quick review. The heart collects used blood from the legs and from the head. It goes into one of the chambers. It goes into another chamber, which pumps it to the lung. The lung is also a vital organ that's within that chest area and that mediastinum. The lung is the organ that holds all of the air and it supplies you with the energy you need to survive. Also, when that heart takes that blood and pumps it to the lung, on the other side of the heart, the left side of the heart, the new blood, the blood that has the energy is received. And then the heart pumps that blood from its own chamber up to the brain through brachiocephalic arteries, to the arms through the subclavian arteries, and then back to itself through the coronary arteries, and then to the rest of the body through the descending aorta, which all have branches to get to every little nook and cranny of your body so that those cells can stay alive. Other things that are within the mediastinum, your food pipe, your esophagus, which sits right behind your airway, your trachea. When you swallow food, you cover up your airway, and then that food travels right to the esophagus to get into your stomach, which is also within that chest area, which is protected by those ribs. Remember we spent a few moments talking about the immune system? Well, your immune system has essentially a freeway that allows the immune cells to move up and down your body. We call it the lymph system. And there are certain lymph nodes or certain regions in which all of these immune cells kind of hang out with one another. And then whenever they're called upon to do work, they travel through that lymph system, which is encased in those ribs, to get to different areas of your body, whether they're going to your right lung or your left lung or into your heart. Wherever the inflammation and the infection may take place, your immune system goes to help heal yourself. So that's essentially what I do. What I do every day is I judge what's going on within those ribs, what lies beneath those ribs, the heart, the lymph system, the lungs. The one thing that we need to mention is when you take that big breath in, there's a muscle that contracts and it allows you to take that big breath in. That muscle is called the diaphragm. It sits right under your lungs. You take that big breath in, it contracts, and you're able to collect the air from the outside to get into your lung. One more quick lesson that I wanna teach you guys so you guys are informed. There's something called a chest X-ray. You guys have all heard of what a chest X-ray is. Chest X-rays can be difficult to read. It's not all that complicated though. Chest x-rays allow chest physicians to take a look at certain structures. When we look at these structures, we can tell if there are abnormalities based on the structures that lie within your chest, densities. There are several different densities that you can see on a chest x-ray. Again, your lungs are full of air. So there's air density. Your body has some fat in it. You can see adipose or fat on a chest x-ray. There's metal densities, which are your bones. You can see bones easily on a chest x-ray. And then there's soft tissue densities, which are your muscles. Your heart is a big muscle, so I can see that on a chest x-ray. Your diaphragm is a big muscle, so I can see that on a chest x-ray. When we shoot that chest x-ray, all of these densities are right next to one another. 
So the only reason that we can see structures on a chest x-ray is because they all have different densities. Your heart is a big, ginormous, soft tissue density that sits right next to air densities, your lung. And it's encased by metal densities, your ribs. So when those structures are abnormal, if I'm seeing too much soft tissue, or you have too much water in your lung, or you have an infection going on, your chest x-ray is gonna appear more white in areas where they're supposed to be black. Again, that's how a chest x-ray works. It's all about the densities. Listen, tonight I wanted to tell you guys what a chest physician is, what we do, what structures we look at, and how we judge what's going on pathologically or abnormal within your chest area by looking at chest x-rays and things of that sort. I appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you learned something this evening. Please leave comments, leave feedback so that I can respond and make my channel better for you. Thanks for joining me on Medicine Deconstructed and I hope to see you next time. What do I always say? Be better today than you were yesterday. Thanks for joining.